Okay, I'm going to share with you uh, my thought process that went into my decision to buy shares in Priceline, um, ticker symbol PCLN. Uh, every time I'm looking at evaluating a stock, I, I always ask myself the same basic fundamental questions about the business. And so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to kind of scratch out my ideas uh, in response to these questions and hopefully at the end of it I usually have a pretty good idea whether I'm gonna buy the stock or if I'm just not gonna buy it or you know uh, post it and uh, keep an eye on it uh, in a watch list type thing so with respect to Priceline first question I always ask myself is what do they do what what is their value proposition what is it all about what do they what is what makes Priceline so unique um, so in terms of what Priceline does they do Essentially, they do one basic thing, and is that they, you go to Priceline for to make travel reservations. So they're essentially an online uh, travel uh, reservation company, reservation business. Um, the Priceline that I am always familiar with when I used it was essentially it was kind of like the black box model where you would pick a region and. You would say pick a region and they would give you a whole bunch of secret um, hotels or prices and you would just pick the one that you think is reasonable and then they would reveal um, reveal the actual location that you have and you and you book it. But in terms of what I know about Priceline now, they're, they've gone beyond that and essentially they've evolved in sort of that they have into like they've expanded into a, into traditional um forms of travel services and uh, the one way they've done is they've been actually buying up a lot of competition like I didn't even realize they owned uh, booking.com and uh, kayak which are pretty well-known pretty popular uh, reservation sites and they own also multiple different kinds of uh, travel websites in other in other countries and other parts of the world too so Priceline's game is online travel reservations. Who do they compete with? Well, the, you know, online they compete with other uh, travel res reservation companies. The big players really are Expedia, and to a certain extent, I would lump in Uber and Lyft as also potential competitors. They've and, and so those are the online competitors. Then there's also the traditional, you know, travel agencies and things like that. But also, you know. In the sense that they're they're selling, you know, uh, airfares, you know, car rentals, you know, it's almost literally planes, trains, and automobiles, and hotels. Those are those are their main, you know, traditional vendors. Um, Those would be your main competitors, or the main competitors for for, for for Priceline. In terms of their customers, essentially, you know, they they go to the tourists, you know, tourists, and also businesses are their other primary customers. And ultimately, they'll come back, and you know, they'll 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 use a, a site like Priceline if they are getting, you know, if they're getting a better deal. And service, you know, versus versus these folks here. So, tourists and businesses, and essentially, where do we go? To, they gravitate. People gravitate to a company like Priceline to to get a better deal, to get a better pricing point um, from that side of it. Uh, another core fundamental question I always ask is, do they make money? Because ultimately, if you're not making money, then why am I investing in you? And why would I put money into your company? So when I look at the companies, when I look at uh, in terms of profitability and wealth creation, a couple of metrics I always focus on is return on invested capital. And for Priceline, they've been coming in at about between 52 to 77 percent return on invested capital, which is really, really, really high and really, really good. Um, their cost of capital. When I compare it to their cost of capital, the weighted average cost of capital is about 10%. So this is a company that's creating positive economic profit. It's creating 
tangible wealth for its shareholders. When you drill down to some of the numbers, this is a company in terms of revenue growth is growing at about 13% a year, and their profits are growing at about 20% which is pretty strong margins, pretty strong returns uh, that I would want to see. So this is pretty much a good hyper, almost not a hyper growth company, but a really gr solid growth company uh, from that sense. Um, next thing I want to know is the financial position of the company. Is the company financially strong? So this is where I kind of like do a quick dive into the balance sheet. And a few areas that I look at are liquidity. And right now, liquidity in terms of uh, price line, they have about two times current assets uh, versus their current liabilities. So they have enough money, enough cash flow uh, to sustain themselves on a short-term basis. Essentially, they also have about $7 billion in cash, and it's greater than the amount of long-term debt that they have. So they can retire the, all their debt if they wanted to tomorrow and still have some cash left over. Again, another good sign of a really strong uh, business. Surprisingly for a, uh, a tech kind of company, an internet kind of company, it has a lot of debt a little bit more debt than I would be comfortable with. It's at about 0 0.5, which is their debt equity, which is somewhat high um, from that side of it. And in terms of the quality of the company's assets, the goodwill comes in at about 20%, which again is about okay. It's probably the, the extreme point that I like to see in a company from that side of it. Um, so. So what we can tell right now is it's company's making tangible wealth. It's got a pretty strong balance sheet. It's a pretty much a, a, one of the big players, dominant best of breed players in the online travel reservation space. So some, so far the story looks pretty interesting for, for Priceline. Now I want to get into some of the potential risks. And that's the other thing we have to look at is, okay, this is all the good stuff, but what potentially could go wrong for this company? Well, I think what jumps out at me is I think it's, still I don't I, I perceive it still to be an easy an easy space to get in, uh, easy space to get into so I you know it could it wouldn't surprise me to see a company like Amazon or Google alphabet you know enter like what would stop them from entering into this space um, and if it did I think that would create a bit of pressure on the company but I think the key thing I think what's really I, I think really what drew me anyway to Priceline was the potential, um, the potential response, which is they have a really because of their scale, they have a really potential uh, uh, capability if they really played things out properly to essentially own, and this is uh, I'm using this term from Scott Galloway and his musings to essentially own the OS for travel and. Essentially, what it means is essentially controlling the distribution. If you wanted to book a flight, you wanted to go on a trip to London, if Priceline played its cards right and positioned itself properly, it could be that place for you. It could be that virtual travel agent that would kind of book your flights. It would know kind of using artificial intelligence what your preferences were and do everything for you. Book your flights, book your hotel, book your tee off times, book your uh, cab. Um, book your excursions purely by knowing you who you are and understanding the database and building a database of customers and behaviors they could be that that company that could essentially be that end-to-end -end travel experience for you and I think that's it's this potential and you know there's a lot of people talk about you know I don't think they could do this on their own. I think this is where they would have to kind of look at maybe partnering or, you know, partnering with with somebody like an Uber or maybe even going to a Google or going with a Google and or an Expedia to get that scale. And uh, heck, even maybe even Amazon, you know, with Alexa, with the whole voice concept. Um, these are potential areas where they could respond. So despite the fact that they might have a lot of threats by other, by companies like Amazon or Google, if they play their cards right, they could really assume a very dominant position and essentially own the OS, own the ecosystem for travel. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, that's kind of what drew me to look at Amazon. I mean, look at Amazon, look at uh, Priceline, 
more not so for where they are right now, but what they potentially could be. Now, in terms of valuation, at the end of the day, the last question is we could have all kinds of feel good, feel good things about a company, but at the end of the day, we're investors and we want to make sure we buy the stock um, at a fair price, at a good price, so there's we can get some upside value. So right now, um, if you look at it from a discounted cash flow perspective, the stock valuations that I've seen come between sixteen forty and eight and twenty four hundred. Um, right now. The stock has been down, and it's gone down to almost, almost at about 17.30. At one point, it was about 17.30 when the market was kind of crapping out, and uh, primarily because Expedia reported a real weak uh, quarter, and it kind of filtered into some other things. So, from a discounted uh, cash flow perspective, stock is cheap right now. It appears to be cheap. Um, when I look at it on a relative basis. You know, it's got a peg ratio right now, a forward peg of about 1.7, which is among the lowest in the space. So um, when I looked at all these factors, so at the end of the day, I kind of had to make it, you can make a decision, right? I looked at all these factors. It seems like it's a dominant best of breed company with respect to travel right now. It's making tangible wealth. It's growing at a very reasonable rate. It has a relatively strong balance sheet. It's got some threats, but... I think if it plays the, its cards right and kind of al strategically aligns itself with a few people, it has the potential to essentially own the whole space of travel and kind of be that gatekeeper for people to want to engage in any level of travel, whether it's being um, air flights, autos, trains, hotels, the whole experiential side of business, of the, uh, of the travel industry. It has a lot of potential and it has a lot of scale by owning a lot of uh, different types of branches in different types of countries to kind of get up to that scale. So when I looked at all of these factors, I, it just kind of, it led me to my to the conclusion that, you know what, this might be a really good kind of long-term, um, long-term kind of buy. Um, but at the same time, with a lot of potential, but at the same time, I think it's gonna be a pretty volatile stock in terms of uh, where it's, you know, it's gonna, it's, it's, it's gonna be a roller coaster ride. Um, but really, short term, in, in the short term, it'll probably, but in the long term, it really, this is really why I'm looking at buying this stock is just to get at the, get on the front door of, of something potentially even bigger than what Priceline is doing right now. And so ultimately that led to my decision to buy.